Hi everyone, Tulio here. I'm back, back from the trip, and I know I haven't been posting videos as I promised I would during the trip. Um, the thing is, I was busy there um, with a lot more stuff than I expected, expected to. While I did put some time into designs for the, the new prototype of the video game music keyboard, I did not spend as much time as I thought I would and therefore I'm going to be continuing the series from here. So the first thing uh, I wanted to show what I did over there and then we'll go over what's next, what's to come. So uh, starting with this, that's the schematic that I worked on when I was there. This is basically a module. So the module consists of an MCU to which I chose this uh, the 18 mega 1284 uh, audio version. That it has four ports, a very clear, easy to use MCU. Then pretty much is the two chips, the uh, analog analog section the, with the amplifiers, and I'm actually sampling the actual audio back into the the analog to digital converter so that maybe I can make some stuff like the some some stuff like a VU uh, digital VU or something like that uh, so everything connects from from the external connectors so we have like a SPI bus uh, and over here we have like a lot of power connectors that go into this so pretty much this is uh, this is the initial a module and then after that I made a Mega Drive module so that's exactly a reproduction of what the hardware you would find on the Mega Drive except that it uses the actual PSG discrete chip rather than using the, the VDP version because even though this chip is reproduced inside the Mega Drive VDP it's not necessarily the VDP so same MCU, basically the same uh, the same system for amplifying the audio and, and sampling. Uh, just the different chips here with the different circuitry that's needed to to connect those chips and the clock divider, so that I can feed the proper clock into this chip. So once I started doing this, I was going gonna go into other modules, but then I figured that it would not be as productive. To do that um, because because I uh, I thought like well most of the modules are gonna be pretty similar to this just changing like some electrical circuitry between the chips and the amplifiers so I spoke to Tito and he agreed that it would be a best idea to actually start designing the main system so I came with this I came up with this uh, this is basically an outline of how I expect the system to work. So I would have a main MCU, MCU sorry for that, that will be used uh, basically to process everything like uh, VGM files, um, the actual keyboard interface, MIDI, decoding and all that kind of stuff. And this MCU will communicate with the modules over the SPI bus. Uh, so these modules are gonna be uh, interconnected through this. Then I have a key system with a small MCU that will generate interrupts every time a key is pressed. I have a LED system that anytime I want something displayed on an LED, I basically just send a message to this system. And an LCD system, which is the one that's going to display everything so that this guy doesn't have to spend time rendering stuff. Which is uh, one of the, the few issues that I have with this guy because since it's a single one processor here, um, I can have system slowdowns depending on what it's doing, especially when I'm playing digital samples on this, this chips because if I'm doing anything graphical or anything with the LEDs, this will, it will slow down the sampling sending to these guys. And if I'm like dedicating to send samples to these guys, everything else cannot be used at that time. So I made a very distributed system 
so that you can just have like the main logic code happening here and you just send uh, commands to each system and you have them do whatever you want. At the end of this, I have an audio system. Uh, so basically this audio system is to generate stuff like chorus, reverbs, um, you know, flangers, whatever kind of audio effects because it's one thing that I felt that I was missing on this guy. It doesn't have any effects. The, the audio that comes is pretty much the clean sound from this. And then I have to post edit effects on it over like record this guy and then we can use the effects on FL Studio which is okay like if I want real time real time effects I can still do it using a computer but it's not a very practical setup if you just want to take this guy and hook up somewhere and just get it playing music so uh, I decided to, to include the audio effects system on it I don't know exactly how it's going to be interconnected how can I drive different effects for different chips or even different channels, I don't know, I'm gonna figure that out uh, in time. So that's pretty much it. Now, the biggest question that was here for me was this, the LCD system. Because if I use something like this, this uh, these displays that come, already come with everything like pre-assembled and uh, the, the issue that I'm gonna have is that these guys are pretty slow and I would like to have a display that is very effective and reacts pretty quickly so that you don't see like stuff filling the screen as fast as it can be but I still don't want to see it so I started discussing with Tito what are my options as far as deciding which, which system I'm gonna go with for the LCD so I, se I separate this in option A, B, and C. So basically option A to B to C, they, are, they have different grades for all of these things. Complexity, cost, and power. And when I call power, it's like, I mean be efficient, like fast and that kind of stuff. So option A is to use one of those TFTs like for Arduino. Perhaps I can find one that has, you know, I can directly communicate to the to the chip inside and I just need to do, add a little MCU and do it a parallel SPI communication. I know this isn't gonna be as fast, but maybe it's fast enough. And then from this guy goes to the main system. The second option would be to use an actual LCD controller. And I've been looking at some chips and some that even have a little bit acceleration functionalities to draw in fonts and, and uh, basic shapes. It's okay, but it raises a little bit the cost and complexity because you know to tie up those things and to actually program the MCU that's gonna talk to these guys. So it adds a little bit of complexity and it's probably gonna cost a little more because of these, these discrete components as opposed to something like this that already comes everything in so it tends to be a little cheaper because it's mass produced. The final option would be using FPGA and actually programming my own LCD controller and then I can add GPU functions myself and then have parallel communication with the main system or SPI, I mean any interface can be programmed into FPGA anyway. But uh, it's definitely the one that's going to cost the most but it's the one that's going to give me the most, uh, the better ability to, to custom build this to exactly what I need. So I need to figure out uh, which one of these three I'm gonna go with. But I've been leaning towards this model because you know FPGA is a pretty cool thing. You can program multiple systems on it. If I have a space left on the FPGA, I can actually program other stuff. Um, I wanted to add like a generic sample uh, plane chip so that if uh, if I want to add the capability to the keyboard to play sample sounds, you know, then this could be used for it. Uh, for that reason, I've been uh, studying, initially this would be my first idea how the FPGA would work. I know the drawing isn't very complete here, but it outlines the basic information. So you will get the pixel in, 
and then I was separating two buffers. One that is being continuously read and then one that's being written. Once this buffer is written, it means I have a new frame. So I'll start reading this buffer and I start writing a new frame to this buffer and the bank, bank select will automatically decide. And then whatever I read is sent to the LCD. It's a very simplistic way to represent and technically it's all that I need. Um, I don't know as far as how this performance will differentiate from something like this, but you know, sometimes you have to go there and try it, and then we'll figure this out. But that's that's one idea that I had, and that I wanted just to share like my thought process. I have absolutely zero experience with FPGAs. So if I do decide to come this route, it's gonna be a learning journey for me. And I'll obviously be sharing everything that I'm learning in the process. I already downloaded a Quartus Prime. Uh, I've been doing some tests, like this is actually the code for that uh, FPGA that I was describing on the last drawing. Uh, it isn't done, of course, but I started, I began already testing the ideas and then figuring out how many pins I'm gonna need, I'm over 100 most likely. So <laughs> yeah, it's fun and it's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of learning and it's, it's something that it's cool for me in a personal level and it's cool to be able to share uh, this and well, it's all for the love of music, right? <laughs> So that's all for now. I just wanted to show where I am and what I've been doing lately. Like I said, it's not, it's not much to show, but at least you can get a glimpse in what's going on in my head uh, whenever I'm not actually coding or building something. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Please share and uh, let other people who will be interested in this know. Uh, thank you a lot for your support and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye. Oh. And in case you wonder, the background music that I've been playing through this video is from the game called Ghost Blade HD. I'm gonna put the link to the game in the description. This is a game that's been released by my company. It's been released uh, this week. And for all the consoles, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Wii U. And it's gonna also be released on, the, on next week for Steam. And all the platforms, Windows, Mac and Linux. So please check it out and uh, help support our company as well. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.